Okay, I want to work through um, just a couple of problems from each section here, both sine and cosine, um, just so you guys have an idea of, of what's going on here. But uh, what we have is um, the first section here is all about the sine curve. And so it tells us it's the sine curve, but also to you see it's starting at the origin 0, 0. So um, what we have here is we're finding uh, both the equation after we found the amplitude and the period for each curve and then we want to describe the transformation from the parent function. So first off the amplitude, if you look to find the amplitude, look at your highest point which is up here at 3, look at your lowest point which is down here at negative 3. Remember the amplitude, okay, it's going to be 1 half, well let me remind you what I'm finding. The amplitude is going to be 1 half times the absolute value of the max, which is 3, minus the min, which is negative 3. So that's going to be 1 half times the absolute value of 6, which is going to be 3. And again, our midline is right here along this axis. And our amplitude is the distance from the midline up to the max value also the same going down to the min value okay those that's your amplitude the period is how long does it take for our y values to repeat so if you pick a point and I'm going to change my color here to blue so if I start let's say here how long does it take for me to get back to this point so we're here tracing it in blue and then it's back to here so how long did it take for us to do that well it's kinda hard to tell there I'm gonna change it to green and I'm gonna start here at zero and let's go how long does it take for us to get back to repeat the Y values so in green I go up down and then all the way back to here. That's when I repeat the y values again. So if you look from 0 to 2 pi is our period. So our period is 2 pi. Okay. So now when we go to write our equation, we'll say that y equals because the amplitude is 3. What will happen here is we'll have 3 times the sine and remember the period of sine to begin with is 2 pi so the period didn't change here so we can just say 3 times the sine of x and that's going to be the equation because again nothing changed as far as the period goes the period of sine is 2 pi to begin with so again the only transformation that happened here is that we have a vertical dilation by a factor of 3. Okay, vertical dilation by a factor of 3, which again increases the range of that factor, of the range of that function, um, from negative 1 to 1 to negative 3 to 3. Okay, so now let's take a look at number 2 though, because this one's a little bit different. Let's find the amplitude first. So if you look here, at this graph the max is 2 and the min is negative 2 so our amplitude is going to be 2 the period let's take a look at how long it takes for us to repeat the y value so let's start here I feel like you see it best if you start here you go up and then you go down, we repeat the y value, so now we got to take into account the negatives. So it stops here. So the period's actually now pi, not 2 pi. Now, let's talk about how, what we write for our equation. So y equals 2 times the sine. Now, instead of just x, 
what we'll have is we got to figure out because the period's different there's going to be something that goes in front of that x and in order to figure that out what we're going to do is remember back in the notes we said the period is 2 pi over b okay remember we said the period is 2 pi over b well what happened was right there was we essentially cut that um, cut that period in half okay that's what happened there and so we um, had a horizontal dilation by a factor of two okay or one half excuse me horizontal dilation by a factor of one half and so what happens is remember those are the reciprocals and so what's going to happen here is we'll put a two there okay so it's 2 times the sine of 2x right there. And what you can also look at is that you can treat b as how long did it take for us to complete that period. Okay. Well, if you look at the graph, we were able to complete that period from 0 to pi. So if you come back here and you place that in for b, 2 pi over pi, the pi is canceled and that's 2. That's how I knew to put a 2 there as well. Okay, So B is how long does it take for me to complete, um, complete one period or one cycle in the graph that we have. Let's take a look at one more so you get an idea. Alright, so the amplitude here amplitude max is 2 min is negative 2 so the amplitude is 2 okay and if you're having a hard time here I'm gonna do it in red this distance here what is that distance there that becomes your amplitude there that becomes your amplitude now we want to figure out the period okay remember the period of sine is 2 pi but how long does it take for us how long does it take for us to complete one cycle well if you look right here it takes us starting here it takes us all the way to 4 pi for us to complete one cycle okay so the period for this particular function is 4 pi okay now when it comes to what we put in our equation what we'll say is we'll use the four, the 2 pi over b remember b is how long does it take us to complete one cycle so 2 pi over 4 pi pi's cancel 2 over 4 becomes 1 half that's what we'll put in front of our x when it comes to writing our equation so to write our equation here we have an amplitude of 2 times the sine of 1 half x there's our equation okay and if we want to describe the transformations here what happens is also too if you look notice what happened the graph started by going down first and then up so we need to put a negative in front of that as well traditionally our traditionally our sine curve goes up first uh, but then it comes back down but because it's reflected over the x-axis so what we have here is a reflection over the x-axis we have a vertical dilation by a factor of two and then we have a horizontal dilation remember 
course, the reciprocal by a factor of 2 as well because it was 1 half. Okay? So there you go. All right, now, um, one more here. Let's look down at 5. So they want us to sketch a one cycle of each sine curve. We're assuming that A is positive, so no reflections over the x-axis. And then write the equation for each graph. Okay, So our amplitude is 3, and our period is 2 pi. So it takes us 2 pi to complete one cycle. So remember, we're going to start here. Now what we're going to do is... Um, it, sine always has a period of 2 pi, right? Um, and so what's going to happen here is we're going to kind of follow our traditional setting at pi over 2. Usually at pi over 2 the sine is 1, but because we have an amplitude of 3, that's going to jump up to 3 here. Then back it to 0. We're going to drop down 3 pi over 2 is now at negative 3 and then 2 pi. When you draw your curve, make sure you have some concavity in it. So it looks like that right there. Okay. If you look here though, at number 6, uh, oop, we got to write the equation. Sorry. They want us to write the equation of each one. So this would simply be the amplitude of 3 times the sine of x. Remember, if, the, if it has a period of 2 pi, which is the traditional period for the sine curve, it's just sine of x. All right. But if you look here, you'll notice the period now is pi. That tells us it takes us only from 0 to pi to complete one cycle of the sine function. Now the amplitude is 2. So we're going to start here. Now typically what happens is, is that at pi over 2, our sine curve should be at a value of 1, or in this case it'll be 2. But because the period now is going to be done at pi, right here, everything's going to be compressed. It's going to happen a lot sooner. So what's going to happen is, because a period of 2 now at pi over 4 here, it's going to be up to um, 2. Then at pi over 2, it's going to come back to here. And then down at 3 pi over 4, we're going to go there. So everything gets compressed because the period is now instead of 2 pi, it's now only pi, which means everything happens faster. Okay. So when we talk about what to put in our function, amplitude goes first, 2 times the sine. Now instead of 2 pi, we got to figure out what goes in here in front of x. And remember we said earlier, take 2 pi, the traditional period of sine, and divide it by the period, which is pi. That's going to be 2 because the pi is cancel. So our function should look just like this here. Okay, let's do one more. So now you got a period of 4 pi. So it takes 4 pi to complete one cycle. So everything's getting stretched out. Amplitude is 2. So we're still going to start here at 0, 0. But now, remember, Typically, pi over 2 is where we reach the max. We're going to reach the max here at pi. Okay. And then typically, 3 pi over 2 is where we reach the min, but we're going to come back here. Our intercept is going to be 2 pi. Typically, it's at pi. So then at 3 pi, we're going to reach our min. And then at 4 pi, we're back to where we started. So when you draw the curve here, making sure we have some concavity, 
there we go okay so again to figure out what to put in our function 2 pi the traditional period of sine divided by the period of this particular function pi and pi cancels 2 over 4 now reduces to 1 half so our function is going to be amplitude of 2 times the sine of 1 half x and there's your function okay um, and then I'll do one of these here so let's talk about this here let's pick a let's pick a tough one that one's pretty easy alright so this one amplitude is going to be the absolute value of negative 3 or just 3 the period here's how we're going to find the period okay all we need to do is take 2 pi and divide by that coefficient that's in our function and we figure out what happens from there okay and so what we do is so we're going to take 2 pi we're going to divide it by the coefficient that we have in there with that x which is 1 half that's 2 pi times 2 over 1 which is 4 pi so our period is 4 pi and what happens is the rule if you look we have a reflection over the x-axis we have a vertical dilation by a factor of 3 and the 1 half means actually we have 2 times x I have a horizontal dilation by a factor of 2 and so there's our rule. All right, so if we graph that, we're starting at zero, and let's make this. Let's go by threes here. You can change the scale however you need it. But we'll make that pi. Make this two pi. Make this three pi. This can be four pi. So now, remember typically when the period's too pi, what it takes, our, our minimum or our maximum occurs at pi over 2. But now because we've doubled the period here, it's gonna, the minimum's going to occur at pi. And then an inflection intercept at 2 pi. The maximum's going to be 3 pi and then 4 pi. And so our curve looks like this here. Now let's look at the cosine curve here real quick. Same same type situation. Um, so just remember here with the cosine curve, traditionally it begins at zero one, um, but we're going to find the amplitude and the period for each cosine curve here. Um, and then describe some transformations that occurred. So, if you take a look right off the bat, if you take a look for the amplitude, okay, um, we're seeing a span of two right there. All right, now I want you to point right off the bat here, the amplitude is two but when we write our function we're going to use negative 2 because if you look at 0 we're down there at negative 2 okay so right here at 0 right here at negative 2 okay and then after that we need to figure out the period okay how long does it take for us to how long does it take for us to repeat the y values and so Let's just put it here and see how long it takes us to get back to negative 2. And so how long does it take to get back to negative 2? Right there at 4 pi. And so because it takes us 4 pi to get through 
one cycle, our period, our period's going to be, our period is 4 pi here. Now what do you put in the function itself? It's going to be 2 pi over 4 pi, which is going to be 1 half. That's what's going to go here in the function. All right, so if you want to talk about describing the transformations that reflected over the x-axis, I had a vertical dilation of two, and then if you look, that's also a horizontal dilation. Remember, it's the reciprocal. So because one half is in our function, it's a horizontal dilation by two. All right, let's do another one here. Let's look at two. We're doing a cosine curve, okay? Um, right off the bat, we can see that the amplitude is three. And the period, we need to figure out how long does it take us to repeat the y value. So even if I just start here, and if I go down, how long does it take before I repeat a y value? That's going to be pi. So the period is pi. Now, what am I going to put into my function? We take 2 pi, we divide by pi pi is canceled, that number is going to go in my function. So I'm finding the period, but I'm also finding what to put into the function itself. Okay? So when we talk about, there's no reflection over the x-axis here, but there is an amplitude of 3. 3 times the cosine of 2x is going to be our function. Now when we talk about what happened here, we talked about that's a vertical dilation of 3. That's also a horizontal dilation. Remember, it's the reciprocal of 1 half. Okay? So there's two examples for you to, to kind of what to look at. I'm going to do one more cosine here to kind of get you going here. Let's look at this one right here. So we want to sketch the graph. Again, assume A is greater than 0, so no reflections over the x-axis here. Um, but the amplitude is 3 and the period is 2 pi. So we'll do 2 here because the period is 2 pi. Um, it's a cosine curve. The amplitude is 3, so we're going to start here at 0, 3. And we'll get back there to that point by 2 pi. So that means we're going to reach the min at pi. It means our intercepts are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Kind of a traditional cosine just with a vertical dilation. Okay. So there's your amplitude of 3. There's your period of 2 pi. If we want to write the equation here it's going to be 3 times the cosine. Uh, remember what to put in the function itself. You can always say 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, it is 2 pi. So we just leave it as x. Now, if the period's different, I'm going to show you real quick how that looks in terms of what our, what our equation looks like here. All right. So your amplitude is 2, okay? Amplitude is 2, so instead of at 0, 1, we're now 0, 2. And then the period is pi, so by pi we need to be back up here at 0, 2, which means our minimum is going to occur at negative 2 here. Okay, so our intercepts would be 3 pi over 4 and pi over 4. 
All right, so there's your curve. Right there, there's your sine curve. Now let's talk about what goes in our equation. So the amplitude is 2 times the cosine. Now remember, you can simply say 2 pi, always 2 pi, divided by the period, which is pi, which is 2. So then that's going to be our equation. Okay? And then finally, um, let's do one of these here real quick. Um, why not this one? Okay, so look at 10. So the amplitude, again, is that number in front. That's 2. Okay, our period, let's do 2 pi divided by 1 half, that coefficient on the x. That's going to be 2 pi times 2. Our period is 4 pi. So it takes us 4 pi to get to back to repeating y values. So what happens is, is the x values get multiplied by 2. The y values get multiplied by 2. Just like that. All right, so we're going to start at 0, 2 instead. 0, 2. And then from there, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to make this pi. We're going to go by every 2. 2 pi, 3 pi, and then the period is 4 pi. So we need to be back at our max by 4 pi, which means our minimum will occur at negative 2. I mean, it'll occur at 2 pi with a value of negative 2. So there's our, there's our cosine curve, just like that. And it should have went through 3 pi, sorry. Okay, so hopefully that helps working out a few examples just to get you through um, everything we're doing here today.